Hey everyone, in this video, we'll break down the payment function step by step and show you some practical examples of how to calculate loan payments in Google Sheets and how to calculate savings goals using the payment function. Before we go through some examples, let's look at exactly what the payment function does and what we need to give it in Google Sheets. As you can see here, the payment function calculates the payment of a loan based on constant payments and a constant interest rate, meaning over the length of the loan, our payments are always going to be the same. So to calculate our loan payments, we need to give the function the following information. Firstly, we need to tell our function what the constant interest rate over our loan is gonna be. Then our second variable is going to be the number of payments that we will make over the length of the loan. Then our last required value is the present value, or also known as the principal of the loan. This is the amount of loan that we are going to be taking on. Then we have two optional arguments we can give this function. The first optional argument is the future value of the loan. This is the monetary balance at the end of the payments. In a typical loan, we can omit this, and it will assume that the future value of the loan will be zero, meaning that all the money you owed is now paid off. However, if you are using this function to calculate a savings goal, then this will be our savings goal, as it is a future value that we want to achieve in certain amount of time period at a certain interest rate. Our last optional variable is called type, which takes in a zero or a one. A zero tells the function that we want to make a payment at the beginning of the period, and a one means that we are going to make a payment at the end of the period. So if you had a loan with a monthly payment, a zero would mean you make your loan payment at the beginning of the month, and a one would mean you make your monthly payment at the end of the month. Now that we have an understanding of all these variables that the payment function requires in Google Sheets, let's go through some practical examples. Let's walk through how we would go about calculating a car loan payment. Firstly, as you can see here, we have all our pertinent information about the car loan. We have our rate, we have our loan term, and the loan amount taken out initially. Let's begin by calculating our repayment of the loan, assuming we only make one payment in a year. We'll call our payment function, and as you can see, the first variable we are asked for is our rate. As we talked about earlier, this is our interest rate. So we will enter it as a percentage. Secondly, we are asked for the number of payments for the loan. So for our six year loan, this will just be six, since we are looking to make annual payments. Lastly, we are asked for the present value of the loan. This is the $25,000 that we are going to be taking on as a loan. Clicking enter, you can see that with annual payments, we will owe $5,124 annually for the six years. Now, what if we wanted to calculate our monthly payments? Well, much like we did for the annual payments, let's call our payment function. Again, we are first asked for our rate, which recall is the rate per period of our loan. Because we currently have an annual rate given, we need to divide our rate by 12 as we will have 12 monthly payments per year. And therefore, each payment will essentially carry 1 12th of the annual interest rate. Likewise, for our next argument, the number of payments is going to change, and we will have six years times 12 months a year, meaning we will have 72 payments in total. Then our principal or present value of the loan initially is unchanged. Therefore, we will now owe 417 each month on this loan. The same idea would apply if you wanted to use weeks, days, hours, etc. You simply calculate the rate per payment period, so your annual rate divided by the time period of interest, and the number of payment terms. To calculate the total amount paid over the length of the loan, all we need to do is multiply our monthly payment by the number of payments, which is our number of years times the months in a year, so 12. As the payment function always returns a negative number, 
I'm going to add a negative in front here to turn it into a positive value. Therefore, the total amount of interest on the loan can also easily be found by subtracting our initial loan amount from our total amount paid over the loan. Let's say that we want to begin with the same loan. However, we are now going to still owe $5,000 after our six years. And for fun, let's say that we want to make our payment at the beginning of each month period instead of at the end. To do this, we call our payment function again and select our rate divided by 12 since we want to make monthly payments again. Then we will select our loan term and much like before, multiply it by 12 to get the months that we are going to be paying. Then we'll enter our present value. Now for our future value term, we said that we are still going to owe $5,000 after the loan matures. Therefore, we are going to enter a negative 5,000 here. A positive 5,000 would imply that you are owed 5,000. Then lastly, for our type, we said that we are going to pay at the beginning of each pay term. Therefore, we will put a one as an argument here. So, we learned how to calculate loan payments using the payment function in Google Sheets. However, earlier in the video, I mentioned briefly that we can also use this function to calculate required savings rates to reach a certain goal. So let's talk about that now. Let's say that we are offered by our bank a savings rate of 2.5%. And over the course of five years, we want to save $25,000. What is the monthly amount that we need to save over the five years to reach our goal? Well, using the payment function, this is easy to find out. Let's call our payment function. Our first variable is our constant interest rate per period. Since we are given an annual interest rate, we need to divide by 12 to get our rate per month. Then our next parameter is the number of payments which will be our number of deposits to the savings account. Then we have our present value. And let's say we initially have zero in our savings. Therefore, our present value of the savings account is zero. Lastly, we have our future value, and this is the value that we want to save. Therefore, think of this as the future value of your savings account, and that is the $25,000. As you can see here, we are returned a negative value. That is because the payment function always returns a negative by default. Therefore, if you wish, you can just add a negative out front of your function to eliminate that. Therefore, you can see that we need to save this amount every month to reach our savings goal in five years. If you have some savings already, you can just apply it to your present value as a negative like so. I hope that this video helped you learn something about the payment function within Google Sheets. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and consider checking out our YouTube memberships by clicking that join button down below. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.